Hey guys, it's Jaeger262, and today I am back with a special video on World of Warships. Now, I am a little late on the first piece of news I'm going to give you guys, because I made a video before, but somehow I got deleted and never uploaded it. But what you're looking at here is the Tier 7 Premium Battleship Scharnhorst, which is a German legend. And to accompany this, I also have the HMS Hood and the PE Frederick. Now, World of Warships has given these ships out for free on a 30-day trial. I am now five days away from ending that trial. I don't know how many of you guys are playing World of Warships or how many of you have seen this, but if you have not, I encourage you to log in soon because that trial is almost over and these ships are absolutely amazing. That being said, for anybody who doesn't play World of Warships, it's not really an important news just something interesting that's happening this game will be completely new to you guys and if it is I encourage you to download it and try it it is a naval simulation game like Armored Warfare which is my primary game that I cover only of course focusing on battleships and not just the actual battleship but all naval vessels from destroyers to aircraft carriers this game has it however that is not why I wanted to make this video Another thing I was late on because I saw the event but I didn't know it was actually an in-game event was that World of Warships is collaborating with Azor Lane. And for anybody who doesn't know what that is, that is a mobile game that I play that I absolutely enjoy. It is a Chinese-based mobile game that focuses on World War II ships and it, each ship has its own kind of personality. They attribute it to a character, and so the character has a backstory as a person. It's an arcade-style sort of mobile phone game uh, with the ability to sort of set up a dorm for your characters where ships can relax or earn XP. You can play missions, which follow the actual events of the Pacific Campaign of World War II. You can play event missions, a whole lot of stuff. I encourage you guys to check that game out. I might do a video on it or not. I've never actually recorded a mobile phone game before. But it's insanely cool. What I didn't realize is that this event has been going on since May 1st, which I knew, but I thought it was only a premium store event. So if you go right now, you can buy special Azure Lane crates, which will give you a commander camouflage and insignias based on the game and you can actually just buy commander straight up in the premium shop however I did not choose that option because while they give you all the most famous Azur Lane commanders it the cheapest bundle is $47 American and it goes up to $200 so I didn't purchase any but if you want to you can purchase a crate starting at just $10 a crate and sort of work your way up the commander list that way what I did not realize is that you actually have to go onto the World of Warships website and click the link to participate. So for the whole month, I assumed it was just a store deal. But in reality, as you can see here, this is part of the event. So this is to resemble one of the dorms that I was talking about in Azure Lane, the mobile app. And this is actually based on the British ship's dorm. And so if you play the app, this is all British ship decor, with the exception of the World of Warships clock right here. And all your ships will be displayed as a model in the Azure Lane dorm, which is just insanely cool. And the music you hear in the background, which I'll shut up for a few seconds so you can listen to, is the music from the app. It's the original Azure Lane score, so... that i hope you heard that <laughs> i'm not gonna uh play that for you guys any more than that but i hope you were able to hear that it's just insanely cool to see the two games together obviously now the reason i wanted to make this news video even though i don't make a lot of world world of warship videos and i haven't made any azure lane videos whatsoever is that this is a game i love to play and just like azure lane i play it frequently and so today, Azure Lane did a massive, massive update to bring Bismarck, which the ship wasn't actually in the game now, as a playable character, and bring in a bunch of different aesthetic and missions, well, 
aesthetic goodies rather for the dorm and for the ships in terms of skins and equipment but also missions to play in the game based on the KMS Bismarck and the hunt for the Bismarck. Now the reason I bring that up is because this week is the World of Warships mission to Bismarck. So for the next five days these German battleships, they're not done yet. The news came out today, but I'm guessing it will take until later tonight, at least for us in North America, to begin those missions. But for the next four or five days, all German battleships will be discounted. 50% up to Tier 5, 30% up to Tier 8, and so on and so forth to Tier 10. I think it's 20 and 15, respectively, for Tier 9 and Tier 10. So that way you can start playing missions towards the KMS Bismarck in this game. And while I'm not saying the two are connected, I just found it kind of cool that World of Warships will release their Bismarck event today at the same time that Azure Lane is releasing their Bismarck event because, of course, they're doing this collaboration you see here. So I'm going to play through a couple of battles of World of Warships, hopefully doing those missions even though it doesn't look like any of them are open for me yet you will have to complete them using any tier 5 ship to complete the missions towards Bismarck and towards the Azure Lane crates. You don't have to buy them for $10 a crate. You'll be able to earn them in game, but you can only use them or you can only use tier 5 ships and up rather. But I will be doing missions for the Azure Lane crates and I'll be doing missions towards the German KMS Bismarck, so I'll be primarily playing in the Sean Hurst which you see here and the KMS Kaiser which is this tier 4 battleship here and so I'm gonna do a couple of games in those explain to my viewers who have never played this game before what it's like give some more insight into Azure Lane the app itself and just to hopefully get you guys excited to join both games or one or the other I love naval games I love these games and this is a really great collaboration I wanted to bring it out to you guys and so stay tuned for that gameplay if not if you're just here for the news I've covered all the news now I will do another video when the missions actually drop for North America but as of today it looks like it's just in Azure Lane that you will get the Bismarck missions and then tomorrow you will get the Bismarck missions in World of Warships so thank you so much for watching this much if it's just for the news please give it a thumbs up if you like the content it goes a long way to helping me create videos like this please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos and as always, see you next time. If you want to see the gameplay and hear a little bit more about what World of Warships is like or what Azure Lane is like and you want to get into it yourself, please stay tuned for the gameplay and for the further explanations. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Alrighty, so sorry for the excited tone in the first part of this video. I'm just really, really, truthfully, sincerely excited about this collab. And if you stay tuned to this part, Thank you so much, and I'll give you some more insight into just Azure Lane itself. So what it is, is an anime style game going off of the manga slash anime, I'm not really sure, known as Kantai Collect or Kala, which was basically about women or girls as ships. Essentially what they did with that was every ship in history because we refer to as ships as hers, you know, in the feminine, I should say, not as hers, so stupid, but in the feminine, so they each embodied a female personality and conducted whatever the fuck uh, that way. I don't know the property. I'm not trying to be disrespectful of the property that anybody is a fan. I don't know that. But Azure Lane is the same type of anime game but it's from China and it's its own entity outside of that property. But it takes the same principle as each ship is the embodiment, is a female embodiment of, well, itself. It's basically every ship gets a personality assigned to it, gets a character design, gets unique character lines, voice lines that is, uh, backstory. However, what they do is based on the actual ship's real life exploits in history and so it's kind of weird it's kind of like a weeb thing but at the same time if you're like me who enjoys games like world of warships here 
and enjoys history, it mixes the two really nicely, I think. Um, it is a mobile phone game, it is just on the app, and it's largely predicated on collecting these ships at random. And like I said previously, today is the first time that KMS Bismarck will actually be entering the game, and not just KMS Bismarck, but King George and a couple of other ships will be there. Um, you can build them for a limited time, it is an event, so essentially what you do in the game is you collect these things called Wisdom Cues, which is the currency for building, and you just build ships. Now you don't get to decide what ships you build, you do get to decide what type of ship you build. So you have light ships, heavy ships, and then special, which is submarines, aircraft carriers, heavy cruisers, um, monitors which was a rare thing in World War II, but there was a famous British monitor, the HMS Erebus. Anyway, that's not important. In those three categories, you, p you get ships at random that you build. However, every event, like this one, you do get a special event category, which builds ships just out of the event. Now, if you play Azure Lane and you're watching this, the news there is that for the other three events, non-event based, and for any ship that has not just been added in the past two months, they have added a wishing well mechanic, which means you can pick certain ships out of the build pool to quote-unquote wish for. And what that does is it increases your chances of getting those ships, but again, it doesn't guarantee it. It's still all at random. However, for event ships, it does not count. And so you still have to just build and build and build a bunch of adventures, which is what I'm doing, to hopefully get the KMS Bismarck. Now, in World of Warships, that corresponds to their Bismarck missions, and that's about it. There's no real parallels between the two games other than that it deals with World War II ships, and at the time they're doing their Bismarck events. However, I do quite enjoy Azure Lane. It is a fun game. Uh, as far as phone games go, they just did a massive, massive update with UI changes that makes it look a lot like an actual PC game like World of Warships. So, I would highly encourage anybody to just download it, try it out. Uh, if you're not into like the anime gaming scene or anything like that, this game probably isn't for you. And if you go on the World of Warships website, if you're a World of Warships player who's watching my video right now, one, welcome, and thank you so much for tuning in. But two, you've probably seen what the commanders look like. The commander images and the crate images you see are taken directly from the app. Obviously, that is done as part of the collaboration. World of Warships didn't change anything. So if you see that and it's too anime-esque and not really what you were thinking about, you might want to skip the game, but I personally do enjoy the game, and I think this is a great collab, and I love this new port, the dorm port for Azure Lane. Now, to describe how to get the crates, it's like any other, any other crate, any other event, you just do, I think the first part is 10,000 XP with tier 5 and above, you get a crate, and then the next tier is... 20,000 and so on and so forth you just play XP you get the crate or like I mentioned earlier you can buy a crate starting at $10 per crate but for me personally that's a little high that's a little steep in price and so I just have not purchased one yet but the reason they're so steeped in price if and again this will only apply to people who are fans of both World of Warships and Azure Lane Hopefully, I will be able to get you interested in at least one or both games today with the gameplay. But, the reason they're $10 a crate is that each one will guarantee you one Azure Lane Commander. Will guarantee you one special consumable, I forget what it is. Will guarantee you signals, three signal flags that are based on the game itself. And camouflages inspired by Azure Lane. So no matter what you do, you will get those four things every time you purchase a crate. Now the random part is just essentially what commander you get and what camouflage you get. But the reason for the higher price on a crate, because usually, although I haven't really bought World of Warship crates, so I can't speak to this, but in other games it's usually $5 a crate. The reason that you're paying 
ten dollars is because you are guaranteed all of these things. You are guaranteed one of six commanders that they've set up, including a new commander that was created in collaboration with Azerlane, meaning it does not exist in the Azerlane app, but they created the commander for World of Warships, and that is, of course, Azuma, which is, I believe, a Tier 9 or Tier 10 premium cruise that was just added to the game last month. And so she is a special commander done in Azerlane style, backstory, character design, all that, who does not appear in the app, but is solely for World of Warships. So that's really cool, and you do have a chance to pick her up every time you buy a crate. Again, she will drop significantly lower amounts of the time compared to other commanders, but she is there. Now, for anybody else who doesn't play World of Warships or doesn't play Azur Lane, this gameplay is for you. I'm going to explain a little bit more about World of Warships outside of this collaboration, just why I choose to play it and why it's so cool. But I highly encourage you to check out Azur Lane on its own. It's not a game that plays at all like this. Again, it's an arcade phone app, but it's very cool in its own right. I encourage you to at least look at the premium shop if you do play World of Warships and kind of feel it out. Or Google Azure Lane. Fun, fun game. It is a big game. I just, again, downloaded 137 megabytes of an update today to my phone, which is massive. All the changes they've made in that game are to make it PC quality on mobile devices, which for me, I kind of wish they would release a PC version and just be done with it because my phone's kind of small. But if you're not into that, stay tuned for the World of Warships part of this. Because I guarantee you, outside of this anime collaboration, which I personally enjoy, but others might not, it is a really great historical simulator for ships. And I will get, I'll probably be playing in the Kaiser the most today, but I'll be doing, I'll be showcasing these premium ships the HMS Hood, the KMS Scharnhurst, and the KMS PE Friedrich, which you see here. So, stay tuned for that gameplay. But for anybody who has already played World of Warships and already knows it's going to happen, you can stop the video here. But go check out Azure Lane. It is a fun game. It's just a good time. It's not competitive. It's just collection. It's collecting ships, playing with those ships, doing all kinds of stuff. They run a lot of events. They run running this event with World of Warships. Last month, they did an event with Kazuna AI, which is a Japanese program who has its own YouTube channel it's a AI program and so it's just really interesting and for anybody who doesn't play either game I still encourage you to check it out regardless maybe it'll get you into one or the other Azerlene is just very very fun to play it's a very laid-back and very different in style on warships and battleships and World War II history and all that. It's heavily filtered through this anime style of art that I wish I could show you here, but I don't actually have any of the commanders. I don't have any of the crates. I don't think... Yeah, I don't have any of the crates here to show you. But when I win some, you'll see that and I'll show you what it looks like. Just go and check it out. I know I've just done 10 whole minutes <laughs> with no gameplay on Azure Lane, and I apologize for that deeply. I'll get into the gameplay right now. I am so sorry. Just, I just love that game. Please check it out. And so first things first, we're playing with the tier four battleship, the KMS Kaiser. All right, so we spawned into a co-op battle with the KMS Kaiser. And so, like I said, this is going to be the portion where I use this gameplay to kind of break in what World of Tanks is to my Armored Warfare crowd or to people who don't really know what it is. And the big part of this battle here is that it is co-op, which means we fight bots. It is essentially... A PvE mission from Armored Warfare, however, it is set up more like a Tier 1 or Tier 2 random battle, which if you've played those, you know that it is basically a 15v15, 15 15, 
but the whole enemy team is bots. It's that. This mimics, unlike PvE, a real World of Warships random battle, and they're never bigger than this, by the way. There's only, I think, eight ships per battle. And so essentially, it just literally copies your ships, which you'll see here. Kaiser for Kaiser, Wyoming, Wyoming, Duga to Duga, Kuma, Kuma, you know, basically just copies exactly what your roster is per team, and copies that with bots versus you. Now, you can play random battles versus other players, and you can play ranked battles just like World of Tanks, which is another game by Wargaming. But for the purpose of this video, and for the purpose of just grinding up tiers, which is exactly what I did in Armored Warfare, I will just be playing co-op. However, with Sean Horst and the Hood and all the high tier vehicle, or ships rather, sorry, I will be playing PvP. Alright, so first things first, that's super different from any tank simulator, which you'll see, is just the targeting. Not only are we targeting enemies from crazy distances, 11 kilometers on that cruiser by the way, to aim, but just how we aim is different. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, because this is supposed to mimic actual naval combat, throughout the entirety of the battle, you and your targets will be in constant motion. And so you will have to adjust your aim, not only for how far away you are, but for how fast you are moving. Right now I'm going at full speed. And to that end, if you look to the bottom left of my screen there where you see W and S, you don't actually go forward or backwards in this game. Just like a real ship, it works using a speed wheel. And so the sound you hear when I do this, that little dinging you hear is to mimic the actual sound of a real speed wheel and you can go forward at max speed or at four a quarter speed three quarter speed half speed or not at all but you cannot stop break and do other things like a tank now second thing you'll see is that I am firing on enemy ships without using my main guns in World of Warships the only guns you control are your main guns Everything else is a secondary weapon. And so on most ships, not really today, but pre-war period, which is where the Kaiser's from, as you can see here, I have a bunch of small naval cannons lining the ship that I cannot control but are firing at this destroyer nonetheless. I only control the main turret batteries. That is a kill. That is just so that way battleships can defend themselves, all ships really, but mostly for battleships to be able to defend themselves at close range, and it is 100% controlled by AI. Now, you can't really upgrade the AI, you can't really make them do anything better, but what you can do is upgrade those guns themselves to kind of give you maybe an advantage in battle. And so those few things I just mentioned really, really, really change how this game is played compared to vehicle games. It's, it's just immensely different, obviously, because we're using ships, not tanks, but the world is just completely different worlds. Now, in World of Warships, you do get a few consumables, which I may or may not need to use during the course of this battle. Again, it's just a PV battle but as you'll see at the bottom center I have R which is a repair kit it will repair fires and water damage and you get water damage from when torpedoes pierce your hole and you start flooding and I have that little thing with the medical cross there which stands for repair party and so in World of Warships what that means is you can just like on a real ship summon a repair crew to repair light damage and so if you look to where my HP is here right here you'll see that there's this gray area to my ship that gray area represents damage my sh battleship has sustained that is not permanent it is just light damage it can be fixed 
Once I hit the T key, that damage will be prepared and it will give me a boost. However, the battle ended rather a abruptly. Uh, my team, or the friendly team, has captured more points than the enemy team, and so we win. That is a possibility. Usually in PvP, PvE like this, when you're fighting bots, you're actually going to have to fight until you kill every one of them. But we didn't in this case. So 13,000 credits, 18,000 damage, not really a lot for a battleship. Yeah, the kind of bottom tier. Didn't really do a whole lot. But that should give you kind of idea of what this is like. Um... I will, when I play the Sean Hurst or the Friedrich or any of those, you'll be able to see what torpedoes are like and what torpedo mechanics are like, but that's coming, the, that's coming later in the video. For now, essentially, what makes this game so different is that you are always on the move. You are going to be firing rounds at way longer distances than you've ever seen in a tank simulator, and you are able to do things regarding your vehicle that you would never be able to do in world in like world of tanks armored warfare any vehicle simulator even world of warplanes or war thunder and that are is things like the repair party where you can actually restore your hp and that's not just like a boost where it's like a repair kit in armored warfare you actually restore your hp up to a certain point and you get that hp back one two you're able to actively repair your vehicle while it's in battle your ship rather sorry and three, the AI cannons, which you saw in action. So I'm going to go ahead and play a couple more games on this and show you. I might make a s part two to this video and just fill it with the gameplay because I know this video is already almost 30 minutes long. So I'll cut this off probably here, and then there will be a second video after this one. So please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed World of Warships, or if you enjoy Azure Lane, or both, or if you want to get into each game please get into one or the other. I'm Jaeger262 in Azure Lane. In World of Warships, I am Nick PR 56 So please, please contact me. I'd be happy to play with anybody. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get notifications when I will upload the second video later today, or tonight rather, where I give you the gameplay of those premium ships and I show you how different mechanics work. Give this video a like, it really helps out the channel, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the support that this channel has got in the past few months in terms of Armored Warfare. Let me know if you like this video, let me know if you want to see more World of Warships content, because I really do want to make more videos on this game. I just don't know how many people want to see that, so please let me know in the comment section below. But either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.